been trying to film this video to tell you guys this crazy, oh my god. I've been trying to tell you guys this for a very long time. I have some crazy life updates crazy that I want to tell you guys so bad. You're not gonna believe it. I just can't believe that we're here. We're doing this. I feel like we need to celebrate. Cheers to this monumental moment. Ew, it's dirty. Okay, everyone, please take a seat, grab a snack, because we have a lot to catch up on. And cheers to reuniting. It's been a long time and I missed you guys and I'm so nervous <laughs> to film this for some reason. Ready for the ASMR? Oh! <sighs> this is my life update. December 2020. I mean, 2022. I moved to Spain, specifically Madrid. I never would have guessed that this would be the year that this would occur. I studied abroad in 2019 in Madrid and I loved it. It was my first time ever in Europe and I stayed in a homestay with this woman named Pilar. Everything was so exciting, so new, so fun. Learning a whole new language was like completely eye-opening for me. I made some of my like best friends that I still have today. So Madrid held this very special place in my heart. Last time I was here, I was only here for eight weeks. So many things in my life were changing and Madrid was a very healing place for me. I knew I wanted to live abroad at some point in my life. I wanted to live somewhere where I could speak to the people that lived there. I needed to pick a place that either spoke English or spoke Spanish. I wanted to pick a place that I had visited before. I just knew, I knew that I could live in Spain for a year. Yes, like this is kind of like the safer option, like living somewhere that you've been before, but to me, it's also kind of the smarter option. Like I knew that moving to a different country that speaks a completely different language would be a challenge and I didn't want to make it more challenging. So I chose Madrid because I lived here previously for a short amount of time. I knew that this experience would be different and boy has it, it has been very, 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 just completely different from studying abroad. Let me tell you how I got here. So flashback to 2021. I was living at my dad's house post-college, moved home to live with my dad and my sister in San Diego. I wasn't loving it. Wasn't loving life there. Lately, I've just been feeling like really stuck. It's like, I like really don't like the situation that I'm in. I want to get out like as soon as possible, but I feel like just everything that I'm doing is not working. Like I'm just not making an income. 
to be able to move out. And I've been picking up jobs to like try to make money and they're not making me happy. Like jobs are just like really stressful and it's like stuff that I don't like to do. So it's just really tiring that I feel like it's detracting from like all of the other good things in my life, like just working these jobs that I really don't like. It's like making it hard to run because I'm just so tired. didn't have like a stable income so I felt like I couldn't move out and moving out was really important to me and very necessary so eventually I took the leap of faith and I moved to Pacific Beach the reason I took this leap of faith is that I had been talking to several companies I was hoping slash expecting that I was gonna get two job offers because we had been negotiating salary. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna fucking do it. I have enough saved so that if it doesn't work out, whatever, I'm not gonna be like on the streets and I'm not gonna be missing rent payments. So I put my faith in these jobs and woo, woo, what do you mean woo? <laughs> Poof, disappeared. Yeah, no job offers there. I was freaking out because I had no income <laughs> and I just moved into a really expensive apartment. Rent was literally $1,340 or something like that per month. That's a lot for someone who's making like $100 a month coaching. I tried to get a barista job, didn't get it. I was like looking around, looking around, talking to my roommate who has so much faith in the universe. She was like, Jess, it's gonna work out. It's gonna work out, don't worry. Something is gonna come your way. Like you took this leap of faith, like the universe has your back. And I was like, bitch, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> um, a couple weeks later, I was hanging out with my roommate at the time and her friend, I'll give her a name, Kate. Um, Kate was saying that she had just applied to teach English abroad in Madrid. And I was like, holy shit, that sounds really cool. How much does it pay? <laughs> I looked into it for a few hours and I was like, okay, I'm doing it. And also the application was expiring like very, very, very soon. And so there wasn't a lot of time to decide anyway, but I was just like, fuck it. If I, if I think too much about it, I'm gonna talk myself out of it. What could possibly go wrong? Madrid is cool. I've only had good experiences in Madrid. I'm currently living in an apartment that costs $1,330 with zero income. Madrid sounds like a good idea. So I applied. Well, placement, education, diploma. My diploma came in just in time for me to submit this. Like I think it was a sign. My sister texted me two hours ago saying that it arrived at my house and then she sent me a picture so that I could upload it. The application is due in 10 minutes. <laughs> like, I'm fucking shook. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do it. Submit. Your application was successfully submitted to CIE. Why am I emotional? Why am I like a why am I like about to cry right now? I feel like I'm gonna get it. <laughs> and that's just crazy. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my god. Yes! Thank god. I
it was going to start right when my lease ended. So it was perfect. I was going to have a guaranteed income of a thousand euros per month, which I know is not a lot, but the price of living in Madrid is a lot lower than the price of living in San Diego. I was living in PB, working this coaching job that made almost no money. Um, but I loved it. It was great. I loved it. Loved the kids. It fulfilled my soul. I was fulfilling my soul, but on the route to homelessness, I needed a job until I left for Spain. That's when I applied to work at San Diego Surf School. That job like fucking transformed everything. I absolutely loved it. I had my freelance business, coaching, surf school job. I was working usually about 40 hours a week, but sometimes like 50 on rare occasions more. I don't really consider videos like a job, but I would like for it to be my job. So for me, making videos is kind of like an investment into my future. Anyway, jobs plus videos was not working. I didn't put out very many, very many videos during that time because I just did not have the time like to balance sleep, food, exercise, and work and videos it just wasn't working and to me these videos are really really important it just wasn't something i wanted to give up even though i absolutely love my life it felt unsustainable because i wasn't like improving my video skills i wasn't making more videos and i knew that i wasn't going to be coaching and working at the surf school my whole life and I also wasn't like, I wasn't like furthering myself financially. Like I wasn't saving a lot of money because most of that was going into my like really expensive rent. So anyway, Spain. Comparably, I would be in a similar financial situation. And I'm, I'm okay with that because in Spain, since the price of living is lower, I am working pretty much half of the hours. In that sense, this has been a huge success. That's like why I did it. Anyway, let me tell you what I've been up to for the last three-ish months. I moved here. That was significantly more challenging than I expected. Oh man. To be fair, I had a lot of hope. I knew that I would find a place to live, but I did have to compromise on some of the things that I really wanted. When I was looking for housing, I really, really, really wanted to live with Spaniards because I knew that that would force me to speak Spanish and learn the language better. That is just something that I, I just, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. I tried my best to live with someone that was Spanish. I was looking everywhere to find a Spanish roommate. I was on Facebook. I was on Idealista Body. I just couldn't fucking find anyone. I met with like one person. I thought it was going great. Like we, we got along really well. We had a lot of common interests. They decided they weren't going to rent the room out because they wanted to renovate it, which I honestly believe, but maybe I could have been more convincing. But alas, a week went by that I was living in this hotel. I was so fucking tired because I didn't sleep for like a week or three or four leading up to moving to Spain because I had to move out of my apartment in San Diego back into my dad's house, sell a bunch of shit, pack to move to a different country. It was just a lot. So by the time I got to Spain, I was ready to like sit on the couch and chill, but I couldn't. There was so much to do. Like I had to find housing. I had to do all of this like paperwork and all these government appointments. Government things are always hard. And especially in Spain when everybody's fucking chill all the time, including the people who are doing the government appointments, it's really hard to get an appointment and like, just for things to work. So when I got here, I needed to do all these fucking appointments. I needed to find an apartment. I needed to find roommates, all in Spanish. Finding these apartments to tour was really hard because you had to like be on the phone with these Spanish landlords. I just didn't study my Spanish. I didn't brush up on my Spanish before I got here. I just ran out of time and I didn't prioritize it for some reason, even though Maybe I should have. Hola. Estoy llamando sobre un piso para.
Ask me Come on. You in 10 minutes. Fuck, <laughs> shut up, shut up. I need Sorry. to think, I need to think. Hola, soy Jessica y estoy hablando sobre, um, sobre tu piso en Doctor Esquerdo. Quiero verlo mm -hmm. y uh, quiero, quiero visitarlo. We're gonna see if I can pull that off. Okay. Tomar. Nueve, uno, seis, cinco. Está lleno. Gracias por utilizar el servicio. Is this a voicemail? No. It's not me. Your voicemail's full. God damn it! Uh, me llamo Hanna. Estoy hablando sobre el ático en Jortaleza, en Chueca. Uh, ya está disponible. So you know what like saves your message when you yeah. message? I accidentally messaged several people with Ola Marcos because I forgot to change the name. <laughs> Hannah, how does it feel to be going to visit our dream apartment? It's really a surreal feeling, honestly. <laughs> yeah, after the whole week of disappointment, after looking so much, I'm so happy that we got this apartment. Can't wait for a new home. It's going to be like so much bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> We're going to be able to walk in the kitchen <laughs> and open the oven. There's beds. <laughs> Half a terrace, isn't it? It has two terraces. <laughs> <laughs> we made it to our dream apartment that is ours, and literally the girls that we are living in an Airbnb with right now are also here trying to get it. I think they've secured it. <laughs> They're literally on the phone with the lady. With Valia. Fuck. But we now we're stuck in here because I can't <laughs> open the door. I don't know how to open the door. Like, is it this? I'm... Is there like a button? Does it turn? <laughs> do you know how to open the door? Oh, do we know how to? This is me right now. <laughs> <laughs> what ended up happening, after all the struggles, I ended up living with these two really awesome girls that were in my program, other Americans. One's name is Sam, one's name is Allison. It's been two nights that I have slept without sheets and without blankets. It has been a bit of a struggle to get everything that I need here. I've been on this fucking quest like for like two days. And I've, I went to Ikea, I went to Primark, I went to Zaka and literally they were out of sheets everywhere. Like they were out of sheets at Ikea. I just did not think that that would be possible. I was trying to order them on Ikea last night and it says they're not gonna get here till it's either like Friday or Saturday. It's like Tuesday right now. How excited are you guys for our Ikea order? So excited! 100%. <laughs> so excited. Vale, pues aquí lo tienes todo, ¿vale? Sí. Ya está todo. Gracias. Adiós. Adiós. Oh my gosh. Wow. How? What the fuck? I Yeah, but I can undo it. <laughs> I would perhaps just accept it and just keep the whole front. No, I'm gonna change it. Oh, that's not gonna fit. Oh, that's not gonna so, finally found an apartment in. You are gonna fucking. You are not gonna believe this. What my neighborhood is called. <laughs> My neighborhood is literally called San Diego. You couldn't take me out if you tried. So I am in San Diego in Madrid, which is in Vallecas, if you know Madrid at all. I have my own room. It's, it's 
great. And I'm only paying 390 euros a month. That could never happen in America. And it's furnished. Like what? I mean, furnished poorly, but it's furnished. I had to buy my own desk and chair and well, I didn't buy the chair, but I bought the desk. I bought the mirror. We had to buy a lot of things, even though it was furnished. Like it was bare fucking bones. After we found the apartment, I started my new job, which is working as a language assistant in a school here. I help an English teacher teach students English, <laughs> as the name implies. I can't believe how lucky I was with like my school placement. Okay, so I just looked up my school for the first time and I just realized that they put me in a videography school. It says like they're professionals in image and sound. That's just so cool. Like I totally thought I was gonna be in like a random school. I'm gonna be like helping teach a subject that I actually care about. Like that's so cool. <laughs> so now I'm extra excited and I just feel so lucky. Like, I can't even believe it. Um, so it's really cool that like I get to talk to them about topics that I'm actually knowledgeable in. How to use a camera, what to do when you go on a photo shoot. And I like, I like to teach, so that's been really cool. I've traveled a little bit. Last week, we had like a week off from school. I went to London. We have a very large bin over, over yonder. We love large bin. Got a large bin, practically the largest bin I've ever seen. Budapest. What do you think? Shadow. Right there. I have no idea. And Prague. That's where I spent my birthday, December 8th. And what I did was I went on a concentration camp tour. And then, <laughs> then we went to a bar. And the bar was like, oh, it was so fucking cool. It was like the coolest bar I've ever been to. It like feels like you're in a treehouse almost. There's like swings and ladders and you can like climb up into the fucking rafters of this place. And there's live music, but there's also a DJ. And there's like a fucking pizza parlor. Like this bar is sick. It's called Dog Bar, I think. That's loosely what I've been up to. I guess that's like what I've been up to on paper. Here's me being real with you. That all sounds like really great and I love to like focus on the positive aspects of it all. But like the reality is that it's been really, really hard for me. I feel like I'm depressed. And why is that? Okay, let me preface with, although I am feeling depressed a lot of these days, I still feel very hopeful that I will get out of it soon. So know that, don't worry. But here's why I feel like I've been having a hard time. Number one, I haven't made a lot of close friends here. I have a few that I feel decently close to, but they live a little bit far away from me. So I don't really see them frequently. I thought that I would make a lot of friends at my job because I thought that there would be other oxes. We call ourselves oxes, auxiliares de conversacion. But no, I'm, I'm the only ox at my school. So I'm the only person at my school that speaks fluent English. A lot of the students speak like really great English. But the thing is like in my contract for work, I'm not supposed to like tell personal information about myself with the students. Like I'm not supposed to give them my social media. Like we're not supposed to talk in any other way besides in school, which I totally respect. But at the same time, these students, they're my age or older. Some of, okay, some of them are younger, but a lot of them are my age or a little bit older than me. And these are people that like, I would love to be friends with. We have common interests. They can teach me Spanish, I can teach them English, but I, I'm i just not supposed to be friends with them. Like we're, I'm supposed to be their teacher 
And so it like almost feels like I have to put up this wall because I'm like, I'm not supposed to like be buddy buddy with them, even though they're my fucking age. And like, we have so much in common. So it's hard. It's hard to like be meeting all these people, but like feel like you're not allowed to like be close to them. I've been trying to make friends in other aspects of my life, but the reality is that I spend most of my time at work. And the other reality is that I am living in a part of Madrid that most of the other oxes are not. Most of them are living in places like Chueca or Gran Villa or Malasaña which are all like the cool, like hip young people neighborhoods of Madrid. But the reason I didn't, I didn't live there is because the rent is like double what I'm paying. For a while, I was really regretting not living in one of those like cool areas where all the other young people live, but I like where I live. It's just like, I feel physically distant from the other people in my situation, yeah. So the not feeling like I have a lot of friends thing and not feeling like I have close friends thing, that has just been hard. I'm independent, but you need social interaction in your life. <laughs> like you can't just be by yourself. And that's just how it's felt. Like I feel like I've just been by myself. I like being by myself, but not all the time. And it makes it harder to have like new experiences when you are the only one that's like pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Like if I'm with other people, it's easier to do things that are scary. And I've been doing a lot of fucking scary things by myself. And I've had my mental breakdowns and I've grown a lot. And I'm like really proud of myself for that. I've learned a lot and I'm like, I'm really grateful for all of the growth and all of the learning, but now I want friends. And I want Spanish friends. I want American friends too, because we probably have, you know, more similar background and stuff, but I do really want Spanish friends. I have a plan. Well, not entirely a plan. I'm ready to push myself a little, a little more. Because now that we have, we have the basics, the bare bones of living, finally got fucking sheets on my bed and a microwave and a heater in this house. I'm ready to expand and to make <laughs> friends. So I guess that's the main thing that's like made me feel a little depressed. I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily homesick, but I made some really, really, really amazing friends before I left San Diego. Of course, I miss them. I feel homesick in the sense that I really miss surfing. <laughs> like, I miss surfing every fucking day. I just became so obsessed with surfing before I left San Diego. I, I literally stopped running because I liked surfing so much and being a runner was such a huge part of my identity. I woke up this morning and I almost cried, like thinking about saying goodbye to all my coworkers. Because the part of San Diego that I'm gonna miss the most is definitely working at a surf school, and surfing and beach. <laughs> uh, because there is no beach in Madrid, obviously it's landlocked. And I'm just really gonna miss my friends. We have everybody else's. <laughs> Got to go get my hair cut. Bye. Actually, well, I'll show you my hair before. This is what it looks like before. It's pretty long. This is from the summer. It feels like. Ugh, not to be dramatic about everything, but it feels like a metaphor that like I'm going to get my hair cut and I'm saying goodbye to my like sun bleached hair because I'm about to go somewhere where I will get very pale. <laughs> so I told you guys all of the positives and I just wanted to share like some of 
some of the negatives because when someone moves to a different country, I feel like people expect like, oh my God, they're living their best life. They're doing all these super fun things. They're traveling and they're seeing the world and they're like so cool and fortunate and it has not been easy at all. And like I thought it, I kind of thought it would be. I haven't had that much fun since I've gotten here. And I just wanted to be real about that. Like I've had fun and I believe that there will be more fun in the future. But overall, it has been more of a challenge and a growing experience than it has been fun and games and exciting experiences. I have a lot of goals for living here and moving forward with my life. One of my main goals is to speak fluent Spanish. And in order to do that, I need Spanish friends. I'm totally open to suggestions. If you have an idea of how I can make Spanish friends, leave a comment and we'll see if that makes it into one of my next videos. I think this would be hard, but I think that I'm willing to try it. What if I made a challenge for myself where I have to speak to 10 new people every week? Okay, 10 is a lot. Maybe we go with five. There's probably simpler ways of like making friends, but what if I just go up to someone and I'm like, hola. <laughs> okay, I'll say, I'll say it in Spanish and then I'll translate it for you. Ugh, you guys, this is embarrassing. We're gonna pretend like, um, like this is a person. I go up to the stranger. Hola, tienes un minuto? <laughs> Mi nombre es Jessica y soy de los Estados Unidos, específicamente San Diego, California. Pero estoy viviendo en, ma en Madrid. Madrid. No tengo muchos amigos y quiero hacer amigos. Entonces estoy tratando de hablar con personas nuevas, como cinco personas cada mes. Quiero hacer una conversación. <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense. I mean, people will get the point. When my Spanish gets better, we can look back on this and laugh. I think that I just need to keep trying. You know, like it's been three months. In those three months, I wasn't super proactive about making friends because I was just trying to survive. But now, now that we are surviving in the other aspects, it's time to continue expanding. I think that there's gonna be some open-minded people out there that wanna be friends, even though my Spanish is not that good. And if it all goes wrong, whatever. Like nobody's gonna remember me at the end of the day. I mean, maybe at the end of the day, but like at the end of the year, they're not gonna remember that random American girl that came up to them speaking like some bunk ass Spanish asking to be friends. I feel like I'm in kindergarten. That's what I did in kindergarten. Like, hi, I'm Jessica. Do you want to be friends? <laughs> but like, maybe it would work. Like, maybe it's a little weird, but like, I don't know. So that's where we are right now. If you have questions about my life and what I'm doing here, leave them in the comments below. I can maybe do a Q&A or like if you have suggestions of what kind of videos you wanna see, definitely tell me. Now that this video is out, I can be transparent again on my social media. I don't know why I kept it a fucking secret for so long. I should have just made the stupid video and then we would be here a lot sooner, but mistakes. Anyway, you will be seeing a lot more of me now that this video is out. And welcome to my adventures in Madrid. Adios. <laughs> Hasta pronto. Bye. Hi guys. It is cold. Because Jess is leaving me. So this is the end of our vlogs for now. I know. I'm gonna try again. <laughs> it's been a time. Oh, me cry. <laughs> Dear vlog, I moved to another country. <laughs> what did you say? I said I've never been sad like this. <laughs>